Okay, I think we can start. We've got the last two people joining us. So welcome to this session about JavaScript and uh, artificial intelligence uh, and how we can save your life. Uh, it might be a kind of something special for you, how JavaScript and AI can save your life. And uh, we'll actually go through a demo, which will actually demonstrate. Uh, and you can take this home uh, and, and go safely home uh, using all the things you learn here. Now, what is AI? Uh, if we look at AI, kind of a, a definition here is basically any task that would normally require some human intelligence to be executed and, and tasks that are executed by computers. Uh, so think about visual perception, so recognizing images, uh, doing speech recognition, uh, making decisions, translating between languages, uh, and so on and so on. I think the, the definition of artificial intelligence can vary somewhat, but I think you got kind of the, the concept uh, is, is pretty much clear on what artificial intelligence is, and it can take many forms. Now, there are, through history, AI is not new. Uh, so if you look at a number of examples here of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, how they kind of came to, uh, to life, uh, is like an example on the top right-hand side. There you could see uh, in 1997, uh, you had Deep Blue, uh, which was a, basically a chess computer, which uh, kind of won a match against the, uh, at that time, the, the world champion uh, chess, uh, Garry Kasparov, uh, which quite a, quite amazing. Uh, and we see a number of uh, examples here. Uh, in 2015, uh, you had Google with the uh, AlphaGo machine. Uh, winning uh, actually the, uh, the Go game. And just like two weeks ago, uh, we uh, kind of amuse ourselves with uh, playing Pac-Man. Uh, so having an AI solution, actually winning the maximum score on Pac-Man, which is quite an achievement. Uh, and kind of tells you what, what we are doing uh, inside of research. Uh, but these, these are kind of examples of very specific purpose-built kind of algorithms for doing artificial intelligence. They can do one thing very well. Uh, there are some examples here of using artificial intelligence in uh, actually machines in, in hardware. Uh, so you see the Google self-driving car, which of course contains some artificial intelligence uh, to avoid you bumping into other objects and so on and so on. So there's, there's quite a lot of art AI in there. Uh, you got the Nest thermostat, which is learning from your behavior uh, just to be able to present you the, uh, the proper temperature uh, based on your actual behavior in the house, not that, but, but you having to specify what temperature you need. Uh, these are Fahrenheit, for those people wondering. <laughs> That's why we opened up the windows. Um, Connect, uh, Microsoft Connect, uh, again, an example where we have AI. AI uh, is basically being used in the Connect to actually recognize gestures. So how can we leverage AI, artificial intelligence, for recognizing gestures of people? Uh, the marketing slogan at the time was, you are the controller. So without having to have a controller, your body is actually the controller. But these, again, are very specific, very purpose-built um, algorithms. So there's a number of other examples. Uh, here you can see kind of vision uh, and image recognition. Um, so one thing that we achieved kind of recognizing images for a computer is, is, is really hard yeah, for us. As humans, it's, it's fairly easy to recognize here a spider from a car, from a chair, uh, and so on and so on. For computers, that's a really hard thing to do. Uh, so it requires a lot of uh, artificial intelligence uh, and through some advances in what we call deep learning or deep neural networks, uh, we've actually been able to, uh, yeah, you can see a number of layers there. Um, we've been able to kind of do image classification better than humans can do now. So we've achieved that, that level of AI um, performance that we can do it better than actually than humans. Uh, and the same thing goes for speech recognition. So when a computer is going to record what you're saying, uh, they can do a better job right now in understanding, recognizing what you're saying, and that can be in multiple languages, uh, than humans can do. And you would have somebody actually taking notes of what you are saying. So AI is rapidly evolving over the last couple of years. And so these like uh, vision, uh, speech recognition are pretty much um, kind of general purpose uh, services. And so we're going to look at now, uh, how can we as a developer leverage those AI services uh, inside of our programs? So whether you're a JavaScript developer or other developer, how can you actually reap kind of the benefits uh, of all of the, the research that has happened without you having to do everything yourselves? 
unless you are on an endeavor of building your own AI algorithms, uh, you are free to do so. Uh, but yeah, you'll, it, it will take some time. So with this, uh, with this session here, I want to give you kind of some, some examples on how you could le actually leverage the existing AI services. I'm from Microsoft, so I'll be presenting a number of Microsoft cognitive services, so AI services that you can leverage straight away. Uh, and they, they kind of cover multiple domains. Uh, if you look at Microsoft cognitive services, uh, we range from vision, so how can we recognize what is uh, on a picture, uh, on an image, understanding what is in there. If it's people, how can we recognize emotions uh, in, in, in those people's faces? Uh, speech recognition, uh, language understanding, again, a very difficult topic uh, for a computer. Uh, whatever we are saying, well, you can hear me say something, uh, you can hear me say something, and you can, well, I hope so, you can understand what I'm saying. You can get the intent of what I'm saying. Uh, for a computer, again, it's, it's very difficult to understand what is the meaning of a given phrase. It's what we call natural language processing. Uh, and this, uh, in the other session, which you're not attending now, is about chatbots. Is a domain where you typically use language artificial intelligence for understanding what a, pe what a person is, 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 is submitting through a chat uh, application. Knowledge bases, search, uh, and some uh, labs uh, as well. So here you can see some examples. And so we, right now we have like 29 of these cognitive services for you to use across the different domains. And so why would you want to use them and how are we going to integrate these, these, uh, these services inside of, our, uh, inside of our JavaScript applications? So they're basically REST APIs. So they make it very easy to integrate all of that, that expertise, that AI knowledge in your application. It's basically just a REST call away. Just make a REST API call and you got all of the power of AI inside of your application. This is what we're going to see how you can apply this. And so it's very flexible to uh, basically to use it in any language that you, that you want to use it. Uh, and we have been using it internally, uh, both as well as uh, it have been tested on our MSDN site. Stack Overflow is using some of our uh, cognitive services. Uh, another example is Uber, who is using our cognitive services, who is using basically the face recognition API. So they are uh, to do driver identification. So if you're entering a car, you've ordered uh, an Uber, how can you guarantee that the person sitting behind the wheel is actually the driver? <laughs> well, there have been some cases. Um, and so they are using face recognition APIs so that you can validate the person that is sitting behind the wheel is actually the driver who's supposed to be there. And so that's kind of a, a, a live example of, uh, of how you can use it. Enough slides so far? Unless you want to have more slides? Okay. Okay, so let's switch to demos now. And so, how do you get access to these cognitive services? So your entry point basically is, you go to microsoft.com slash cognitive, which will land you on this page here, where you can basically have, have the, the overview of all the different uh, cognitive services here. Uh, you can go and, uh, and check out the details uh, of the different, uh, the different services. Now, this is just the documentation or links to the documentations. How do you get started? Uh, we got free offers for uh, each of these uh, APIs. So just go to, there's a, a link to get the trials. Uh, and then basically you can create the APIs that you want to use in your application. So you can start for free. You'll get a quota of X number of uh, API calls per month. Uh, and typically a number of requests per second. Uh, but apart from that, you are free to go and, and try it out in development, in tests, in production if you want to. But just know, be aware of the quota that exists. If you want to go beyond the, the existing quota, you just pay for the amount, for the, the actual API calls that you're making. Now, once you have your, uh, your APIs uh, set, you, you've registered for, for the free cognitive services. So what you're seeing here is the, the Azure portal. So the cognitive services uh, are made, made accessible through the uh, Azure management portal. Uh, and in there, you can basically get access to uh, or create new uh, cognitive services as well. So we can say, for example, new, and I want to create a cognitive service. Let's say cognitive service. So what we can do here, we say create. And in here, you 
have the option to choose any of the cognitive services that exist. And then you provide some details of where you want to host it and you're ready to go. So as a good TV chef would do, they have a cake ready in the oven. I already have a number of cognitive services ready here uh, for doing the demos here. So we don't have to wait to, to spin them up, but typically it takes like a minute uh, for spinning up these, these cognitive services. Now just looking at what, what am I going to show here? So what I've built here is a very straightforward uh, JavaScript application. Uh, it's running in Firefox. That's not because Edge does not run JavaScript. It's just to show you <laughs> different browsers. <laughs> okay. So we have our JSConf 2017 AI demonstrator application here. And it does a number of things here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is, is kind of, we're going to start with, um, we have here our search box, which allows us to enter like a command or a phrase. What do you want to do with this application? So this application is capable of determining a sentiment of a given piece of text. So we can recognize uh, the sentiment of a piece of text. Is this a rather positive, negative, more neutral? Uh, blurb of text. So this could be useful if you're making an e-commerce site where people can actually register comments about products and you may want to validate uh, what is kind of the, the sentiment of the, the comments on your products. Yeah. So we're going to do sentiment analysis. So then after that uh, we can recognize some pictures. So we're going to use the custom vision API which allows us to kind of determine what is on a given image. This one I have tuned here uh, to recognize kind of the t-shirts of football players, uh, soccer players, um, and to basically determine is it a player from uh, Club Brugge, we're in Brugge here, uh, of Anderlecht or Barcelona. So I've uploaded training into system already with a number of images uh, and so we can provide it an image of a football player it's going to say what specific club does this uh, person belong to. Then we can take it one step further. Uh, and, and recognize on a given picture. So we're going to use kind of the face API. So if we give the picture of a person, we can determine or we can estimate uh, what the age of that person is. Uh, if you try it out, don't be offended. Sometimes we're a bit off, but the system is continuously learning. Um, so we are going to determine what is the ex the estimated age of that person and we're going to determine the gender of the person as well. There we're mostly right. Uh, however, we could be off as well, and depending on your hairdo. Um, so face API to determine kind of age and gender of persons, but you can, you can determine other characteristics as well from the person. Uh, and then finally, which kind of brings me to the, the meat uh, and probably why you're here is how can we save our lives with AI uh, is the magic button there, will he or she survive? It's kind of the magic button that we have in our application. And so we'll get a, we'll get a survival score. So let's start now with first determining, well, we can click those buttons uh, to, do, to drive our application, but maybe we want to have more of a, a natural language uh, interface inside of our application, just a, a search box and people can just type a phrase and we'll determine the intent uh, for the user. So we could say, for example, uh, what do you think about this phrase? Something like this. I'm going to determine the intent. So basically here we get an intent score. And you can see that the button for determining the sentiment is being enabled. Because we recognize that we were, what we were typing here is asking for determining the intent uh, or the determining the sentiment of a given phrase. Uh, we, could, we could say this differently as well. Uh, or we could say sentence. Uh, whatever. And so you can see that kind of the score that you see here is adjusted based on kind of the, the phrasing that we are using uh, to determine the intent. So this is what we call natural language processing. Now how does this work? So as said, this typically is being used in, in chatbots but could indeed be used if you want to have this, this natural language input uh, in your applications. So first thing, uh, this natural language processing is uh, using a service which is called uh, let me show it here. It's in the language part. It's called the Language Understanding Intelligence Service. We are renowned for choosing long product names. 
Language Understanding Intelligent Service is one of those long names that we have invented here at Microsoft. Hence why we're usually referring to it as Lewis. So there is a reason, because it's too complex. So here you can see kind of the Lewis management interface. So we got here a dashboard of uh, kind of the activity that we had on our natural language processing service. Uh, and kind of the, the key thing that we want to define in your natural language processing service is uh, what we call intents. So what are kind of the actions that you want to recognize in phrases? Uh, these are called intents. Um, and so looking at the intents that have been defined here, so we got a number of intents already here. So we can analyze a face, we can analyze a picture, uh, we have calculating the sentiment, uh, we have find, finding of our sessions. So if you look at, for example, analyze a face, we can see here a number of what we call utterances. So utterances are basically sample phrases that we give the system, this natural language processing service, to kind of learn from, to determine for the analyze face intent, these are kind of example phrases for you to, to recognize. And behind the scenes, we are going to use artificial intelligence to kind of determine all number of variations of those, of those phrases so that a user does not explicitly has to use that phrase, that, that sentence, that utterance that you have defined, that you have programmed. So the system makes it very flexible uh, for, for using so other, other, uh, other phrasings uh, of, of within your application. And so here we have analyze face. Uh, and, and one thing that you can see here is, well, we're lacking kind of the survival uh, intent. So we're going to add uh, a new intent here. So if we go to our uh, intents, we can add an intent. And uh, I should be using a, a very specific name here, uh, which is, this is the name of our intent. So it's called I'll calculate survival. So why does this, has to be, does this have to be a, a very specific name? That's because this will be your, your handle to be used in your program, in your JavaScript code. When we do natural language processing, we're going to use this specific intent name to refer to what, what action needs to, be, uh, needs to happen. So in our specific case, to enable a button, the, the button for, well, will he or she survive? Well, we'll use this specific calculate survival uh, kind of keyword. And so we are going to save this one. And so now we've added a new intent. And so now we need to add some sample phrases. So how can we kind of phrase the question of uh, how will he or she survive? Well, for example, will he survive? Uh, will, oops, will she survive? Um, some other ways to phrase this, to make this crowdsourced uh, application. Will this person survive? Yes, will this person survive? Yeah. Will he die? All kinds of ways to kind of phrase the survival of a person. So we're going to save our utterances. And now what we're going to do is we're going to train basically our application. So training will generate behind the scenes all of these variations of phrases. So we have now trained our application. And what we need to do now is publish our application. So we have our publish button. And already what you can see here is what, what you can see is the endpoint URL. So this we will be using for making our REST call. So this is basically our entry point into this Lewis service for us to call to, to uh, program or application to use this intent. And so how does this now happen in code? So in here in the handle intent method uh, or function, you can see that we have now here our, for example, the uh, survival disabled button is going to check if our intent name equals our survival intent constant value which is actually the intent name that we defined in the Lewis portal. Yeah, so here, we're going to set it if it's equal or not equal, we're going to disable the button, otherwise it's enabled. Okay. Now, how do we call into Lewis? This is what you see here uh, in this NLP service class. Uh, so I've defined here a get intent function, which takes the text that we put into the screen. Uh, and then we're going to define the endpoint URL. 
So the endpoint URL is basically the one that we got from the portal. So this URL, I'm not putting it here because you can see all of my keys uh, because of the recording. Uh, and we're going to add append here Q, which is basically our, uh, our phrase that needs to be kind of parsed for which we need to do natural language processing. So we're putting our endpoint, and as an HTTP header, we're going to put our key in there. So what is that key? Where can you find it? Uh, you can actually find it in the Azure portal when you create your Lewis uh, service. You will get a pointer there, access uh, your access keys, and you can just grab it there, copy it, uh, and put it in here. Okay. And then basically the only thing you do is an HTTP GET to that endpoint. And what you will get in return is a JSON document which will contain, amongst others, the top scoring intent. So you can see which intent is kind of the most likely, the most likely one that we recognized, and you'll get basically the probability scores of all the other intents as well. Most of them should be zero, uh, but sometimes it's kind of, the system might be a bit confused where it says like 60% 60, 60 we think it's this, this intent, and maybe 30% it's another intent. So you get all of those scores as well, so you can dis determine yourselves which one you think is the top scoring intent as well. But you'll get, in this specific case, we're just going to get the top scoring uh, intent. Okay. So one thing I need to do here is enable our, uh, which I've shown already. Uh, and in here, what we should now be able to do, because we added the survival intent, so we should be able to say, will she uh, die? Determine the intent. And lo and behold, we have our calculate survival with a probability of 90%. And our button is enabled, oh, which is amazing. Note that I did not put will she survive in, the, in Lewis, I put will he survive. Uh, maybe we could phrase it differently. This is now, uh, I'm on the edge here. Uh, what is the probability that he will die? I have not tried this one. It still says it's calculate survival. So this is about the top scoring intent. But right now it's only sure for about 22, 23%. But still we get the proper intent. So you can make your application quite flexible uh, with this, uh, in this way. Okay. So let's now uh, move to the next one. And we're going to determine some sentiment. So we now know how to, uh, how to invoke this, this Lewis service. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to enable this part here. And what you'll see is uh, we can get some uh, text blurb here. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, what is the intent text to enable my button? Oh, the sentiment it should be. Okay. And then we could say, uh, for example, uh, this session is awesome. Give me more. I'm going to determine the, the, the sentiment of this phrase. As you can see, it gets a score, a positive score of 95%. This is not referring to whether this statement is valid. It's up to you to determine. But basically about how positive is this statement. So we could say, uh, Whatever, um, I've read uh, this book and it's terrible. Then determine the intent, the sentiment, sorry. It's actually 2% positive or very negative. So it goes from one to zero, where one is positive, zero is negative. So with this, you can see kind of we can do actually very quickly, very easily uh, sentiment analysis on, on pieces of text. Yeah. Note that we can do sentiment analysis as well or emotion uh, analysis on actual people's uh, expressions as well. This will be something that you could do with the face API. So again, how are we invoking this, this sentiment analysis um, in our application? So for sentiment analysis, we're going to use an API which is called the Text Analytics API. So the Text Analytics API allows you to kind of determine what is the sentiment. It can determine what is the, the actual language of a given phrase. So we can do it in Dutch as well. So I've been doing the demos here in, in English. 
but you can use sentiment analysis uh, and, and also Lewis uh, on Dutch uh, text as well. So Dutch and French uh, are supported too. We can get some key phrases and so here we get our, our sentiment uh, analysis which we have been using uh, so far. So again in our code, uh, let me switch now to the sentiment service. In the very same way, we got our endpoint. We set a header which contains our key again. We have a body, body which will contain the actual text. And then we're going to do an HTTP post. So we're doing a post because we got kind of a, a blurb of text and the actual body of the, uh, the HTTP call. Okay. In which we specify the actual language and the actual text. Okay. And again, the, uh, the endpoint uh, as well as the, um, the keys for your uh, text analytics API you can find them back in the, the Azure portal. Uh, just to show you here, uh, quickly switching to this one here, if I take text analytics. In here, you will find your endpoint, whoops, yeah, and our keys, if you push the button there, you'll get actually the API and the keys that you need to invoke, that you need to put into your HTTP header. So very straightforward, again, just use some APIs uh, to recognize some uh, a sentiment. Now switching now to the third kind of topic there. How can we recognize kind of an image and what is on an image and, and using the custom vision API? So in here, uh, let me switch you to show you first what it will look like. I'm going to comment this one up here. We go it's reloading so now here we can uh, say uh, what is on the picture we need to determine our intent so we got recognizing of a, of a picture we can say I want to recognize kind of the club of this this player here guess what club it is uh, it's Barcelona and we're pretty sure uh, but we're in uh, in Brugge here any fans of uh, Club Brugge don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> we have a picture here of uh, Joske. So Jose Izquierdo. So let's put this one in here. You can see if we recognize the club now, it's going to say Club Brugge with a certainty of 99.99%, which is it's quite accurate on this one. So how does this work? What is this custom vision API? Because we can give it to a kind of a, a generic uh, vision API and it will tell you, well, I can see a person. Maybe if it's somewhat intelligent, it will say it's a, sp it's a sports player, uh, but it probably won't know that it's a, a player here from the local club. So for this, we're going to use uh, the custom vision API. Switching now back to uh, this one here. And I'm switching now to the custom vision portal. So custom vision is a preview API, so it's kind of a beta version. In here, you can define what we call projects. So I have here a soccer project, which will recognize kind of soccer players or soccer clubs. So you can see here, I've added already some pictures. Uh, if we look at uh, Club Brugge, for example, you will notice uh, there's, they pretty much all look the same. <laughs> but you might have thought that yeah, this, this player was already in there, so it just recognizes that same picture. Well, he actually is not. So I've, I deliberately left him out, um, this player, so that basically the custom vision API is going to use kind of artificial intelligence to kind of find all of the similarities between the different pictures that you've uploaded. And we have done it, for example, for recognizing leaves of, uh, of trees. We upload all kinds of different leaves of trees to recognize if you take a picture of a given leaf you find uh, somewhere in the woods uh, to recognize what tree it belongs to, yeah, or what type of tree it is. And so here, uh, I've done it for, uh, for football clubs. Uh, the same thing with, uh, with Barcelona. I did not add uh, Lionel Messi. Here I've used only uh, two, four, five, six, seven images uh, to determine kind of what is kind of the, the common look of a Barcelona player. 
uh, typically is the shirt, uh, which is a common part. Uh, and so it's using this custom vision API uh, for determining basically uh, who, uh, what a club uh, a, a given uh, player belongs to. Okay. So how do you get started with this? Well, you open uh, just custom, you go to custom vision uh, AI, create a new project, you upload some pictures, you tag the pictures yourselves. So you assign some tags. And so in here I added uh, the, the club names to my pictures. Uh, and then you just invoke again, just an API. It's a bit boring, but again, it's, you set the endpoint, you set the actual key of the service, so your own key that you get, you, which you can get from the custom vision API portal. You do an HTTP post and you give it the URL of the image. Uh, if you want to, you can also uh, upload the actual image yourself. So if you put in the binary data, uh, you, can, you can provide that as well to the API. Just invoke the endpoint and then you're going to parse kind of the results. In the results, you'll find kind of the predictions and it will give you the tag and the probability, the tag being kind of in this specific case the club name and the probability of uh, well, that we think that club belongs to that specific image. Okay. So again, it's, it's very simple recognizing some uh, using these AI services, call a REST API, provide the proper key, uh, give it the actual data, um, and then just parse the output, which is just JSON documents. You might be wondering, how do I know all of these JSON documents? Where do I find kind of the, the, the API documentation? So for each of the, uh, the APIs, we have uh, documentation uh, similar to, do I have it here? Let's take this one, for example, the text analytics API. So you get kind of documentation like this, where you have even a testing console. You will find here request URLs, the parameters, and all the descriptions. You can see a request body, an example, and you'll see an example response as well. So what is the schema uh, of our API? So you get pretty much all of the details. Uh, and actually, uh, if we scroll down, you get code samples as well for different languages. So just copy paste and you get a working sample for that specific API. So we're making it very easy on you. So moving now to kind of the fourth one. So how can we detect age and gender? So how are we going to use kind of the face API? So I just say, uh, how old is this guy? Determine the intent. So it knows that I want to get information about age and gender. So if we now click on the detect age and gender on this specific image, we think he's almost 32 years old and he's a male person. We could try it with some other image. Uh, okay, let's try this one. This, this nice guy. Let's see if it's right. That age and gender. And it's, well, it's, it's a bit off. <laughs> Not with the gender, but with the age. Uh, so yeah, you can be like 10, 15% off. I'm not gonna, not gonna spoil. <laughs> it's it's way off. <laughs> yeah. So, face API is going to recognize uh, age, gender. Uh, what other stuff can it recognize? If you look here at the face API, then there's a. You can also try these um, these examples here. Uh, it will give you information about. Uh, it will give you a face rectangle if you want to. So if you want to make it visual in your application. Where did we find the face or multiple faces? It can work up to 10 faces in a given image. Uh, it will tell you things about the hair, uh, facial hair as well, if you're a beard, if you're a mustache. Uh, it will give you information about your smile, head pose, gender and age, which is wh what we're using here. Uh, glasses, uh, interesting thing here about glasses, it will recognize swimming goggles as well. Not sure. Maybe there's somebody on the product team that is uh, an avid swimmer. So you get makeup, uh, emotion. So I talked about you have sentiment analysis, we have emotion detection as well. Again, might be interesting in scenarios where you're tracking kind of how are people reacting to products. So take an image about, of their face and you can detect basically the, the emotion uh, of the person and how they react to your, uh, to your product. Uh, so you get a lot of a lot of information. We get the face landmarks, you get dots of where are the eyes, the nose, etc. Et 
to get a lot of a lot more detail. So how can we get to this data? Uh, again, uh, same message. We got our endpoint. We got our key. We make uh, we give it the URL of the image and we make a post request. Uh, but one thing that uh, we can add here is we can actually ask for which attributes do we need. As in this specific case, I'm only asking for the age and gender. If you want to have like the hair information, you want to have the, the facial landmarks, so the dots of where the actual uh, mouth and nose and, and, and all of the other uh, characteristics are, but well, you can ask for that as well. So it's just a, a comma separated list for the attributes that you want to retrieve from the API. Okay. And so you will get in return basically an array of faces. If there's a single face on the image, you'll get just a single record, uh, which in this specific case, I'm hard coding, just take the first face that you recognize. Um, but you can scroll through every single face uh, in the image as well. So here we're just doing face detection. The face API can also do face identification. So if you upload a number of faces like we do for Uber, it will do identification of faces as well. Similar to the custom vision, we can do uh, face recognition. Okay, any questions so far? Yes. Uh, is it possible to give your own uh, inputs to the uh, image recognition, for instance, uh, because you now upload it and uh, sperm the tree yourself? Uh, so if you want to couple it to your uh, product database, for instance? Yeah, uh, so the question is, uh, you mean for the custom vision API? <coughs> like where I recognize kind of the, the football players? Yeah. yeah. Can you kind of couple it to a product database? Uh, yes, you can. So you can you can insert like a, a whole set of uh, product images, tag them, uh, and then basically it will recognize the product uh, that you have put in there. It will give you kind of the tag of the matching product. Yes. So these are kind of using kind of these simple ready-made AI services. So like vision, like sentiment analysis, um, like uh, sentiment analysis, so face detection, those kind of things. Uh, what if you want to make things more complex? You want to build kind of the AI for uh, survival, which is what you're all here for. For that, we're going to use machine learning. So what is machine learning? It's basically, well, how do we learn? How does a child learn? Well. Typically, you, a child, well, they fall, they trip over something once, sometimes twice. The third time, they will avoid the object, the obstacle. Or you bump into a glass, uh, a glass door, which I have done when I was a child. I did it only once. You learn from experience. You learn from past behavior. The same thing happens with machine learning. So traditional programming does what? You take data, you take a program, you run it through a computer and you get some output. Yeah, that's how traditional programming works. How does machine learning works? It takes some data, it takes some output that we think should happen, and you basically generate the program for you, which is what we call a machine learning model. Yeah, that's kind of the purpose of machine learning. And then you feed new data into your program to determine or to predict what is going to happen based on past behavior. So leverage information from the past to build a model, to build a program for you to determine, to predict the future. This is what you do with machine learning. So we have Azure Machine Learning. Again, what is this? So you can take some data from different data sources. You feed it into a web-based kind of modeling tool, IDE, which I'll show in just a minute. You can publish your model as a REST API and then invoke it from your JavaScript program, which is what we're going to do right now. So what are we going to model? Basically our chances of surviving the Titanic. So if you were today on the Titanic, what would be your chances of survival? So we're going to look at past data, so the list of passengers on the Titanic. What were their characteristics? What were their age, gender? Were they accompanied by children? Did they have their spouse with them? Uh, where did they embark uh, on the ship? Uh, how much did they pay for the ticket? Because that might be relevant in determining if they survived, yes or no. And we're going to train a model 
based on that data. So switching now to the machine learning stuff. So what you see here is the Azure Machine Learning Studio, which is kind of the, the web-based interface for creating these uh, machine learning models. I'm going to straight go into the, uh, the final completed model, because basically just drag and drop stuff. It's pretty small. Let me zoom out a bit and make some room here. So we are, and I'm going to show you here, so here you can just drag and drop items here. Uh, so on the left hand side you have all kinds of, you have sample data sets. Uh, we have all kinds of kind of formula, statistical functions, uh, other scripts for you to kind of slice and dice your data. Uh, kind of remove columns, add some information, calculated columns, uh, add some neural network uh, functions in your uh, machine learning model. And then you can basically run your model and generate a web service, which is what we do here. So quickly showing you what does the, the initial data look like. I'm going to visualize the data here. So you got a kind of a, a feel of what it looks like. So expand this one here. So here you can see the actual passengers on the Titanic. So for example, the first one, uh, Brown, Mr. Uh, Mr. Owen Harris, a male person of 22 who was joined by uh, his wife, that was his ticket number, he paid 7.25, I think, pound it was, because they left in, uh, in the UK. They embarked on the S gate, uh, and they, he did not survive, survived is equal to zero. He traveled in class three, so we have first, second and third class on the Titanic. Uh, and so we get some data. And so here you can see uh, a person here, the second one here, uh, Mrs. John Bradley Cummings, a female person of 38, survived, traveling in first class, uh, also accompanied by uh, a person there, uh, no children, uh, and so on. So she paid 71 uh, uh, pound, etc. So you see kind of uh, a set of the data. And so we're going to use this to kind of add some metadata, clean up the data set. And then finally here, the bottom part is what the, the important part is. We're going to actually train, add some algorithms in here, some machine learning in there. And so in this specific case, we're using neural networks. We're not gonna go into the details of neural networks or we'll be here for another two days. We're going to use neural networks, train our model on some of the sample data. We're going to score our model just to look how good is our model as opposed to the actual data. And this will give us kind of the program for us then to feed live data into. And so here at the bottom you can see set up a web service. So for this specific machine learning model we can then generate a predictive web service which we can then invoke uh, from our program. And again I'm just quickly going to show it here. Same thing, uh, we have our data, so we have our uh, endpoint, which is basically our, uh, I think here, our host, our path. We have again our Azure machine learning key that we provide to invoke our machine learning model or the web service thereof. Uh, and so how does this now actually resolve here? So I'm going to detect my age and gender, which I've done. And I'm going to check, uh, is he going to survive? Let me see. So, what is my score of survival? Unfortunately, I only have 36%, so I'm below kind of the average. So I'm probably gonna die, which is kind of painful. Now, let's see if our good friend uh, Izquierdo, what he's going to do? Actually, didn't try with this one. Come on, Jesse. Oh, yeah, um, I should probably check how old is he. I need to update kind of the age. Yeah, he's 31. And is he going to die? Dramatic phrasing. And lo and behold, Jose Izquierdo is going to survive. He has like 62% of surviving the Titanic based on his age and gender. It's probably his age, 
not the fact that he's playing for Club, Club Rur, uh, although it might. Um, but here you can see how we can actually leverage these complex Azure machine learning models, but still easily just by kind of exposing them as JavaScript uh, services. We can actually kind of easily integrate them into our existing programs. So there is cognitive services, kind of very commodity, shrink-wrapped uh, customer services. We can go Azure machine learning to do more drag and drop type of creation of machine learning models, but we can go all the way to more coding uh, technologies as well, which we haven't shown here, uh, because they're well beyond kind of the scope of this, uh, this session, but know that there is other solutions as well, which again, you can integrate using uh, REST APIs. So the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So I would say, go and invent the future. Check out marksoft.com slash AI for kind of a link to all of our AI solutions. With that, I wanna thank you for your attention.